Now at this point, we've done a little bit of the preliminary stuff. We have an idea for an app. It's time to start to set ourselves up to, to work. Um, we're going to use that Cordova project eventually. For the moment, we're going to focus on just the, the basic HTML coding of it. Quote, unquote, basic, because it's going to be HTML, CSS, JavaScript. But I'm going to plug in my flash drive. I'm going to create a new project folder. And again, I'll give you my, my version of the code at the end of the day. But I'm going to plug in my drive. And on my flash drive, I'm going to create a folder. You don't need to put it in your apps folder. If you did it like me, your apps folder is where I've got the actual Cordova apps ready to use. I have, in my case, a separate folder for the stuff of this class. And in my case, I'm gonna, that's where I have my icons and such. In there, I'm going to create a folder. Call it anything we want. doesn't matter. I'll call it app www. Eventually, what we create here has to be put into the www folder of my app. So just somewhere on your flash drive, create a folder, call it whatever you want, and we'll go into that project folder. And the way we're going to set up is we need the supporting files uh, for our project, which we'll, we will eventually migrate into Cordova. We started to learn in part one jQuery Mobile. We saw that that's a way to quickly create an interface and it has a lot of built-in widgets, a lot that we haven't covered yet, which we will. A lot of these widgets that will help us create uh, interfaces quickly. Drop-down menus, uh, pop-ups, um, date pickers, all of these pieces that make up a modern app. So we need to set ourselves up. We need the libraries, uh, the files that will allow us to use jQuery Mobile. Let's take a a trip over to the website jQueryMobile.com. We looked at this site a little while ago. Hopefully you've looked at the documentation since we've looked at it together, but if not, that's okay. We're going to, to do it together also. So notice we what we want to do is download the latest stable version. We want to download the actual files. When we first touched on jQuery Mobile, we connected a plain old HTML file to the online version of jQuery Mobile libraries. And that worked just fine. But the big detriment, what's the big detriment to having your files on someone else's server? They're on someone else's server, exactly. So if their server goes down, if there's an interruption in your internet, your app suffers. So one way around that is to download these libraries and include them in your own project. That way, even if your app is offline, if the user's phone is offline, no matter. The files are in your app on their device. They don't need an internet connection. Make a note here. 145 is the latest version, and then that should also be coupled with jQuery, either 1.8 to 1.11 or 2.1. I'm going to just make a note of that because we're going to come back to that. So this works. jQuery Mobile this is the version we're going to get, and it works with just version of jQuery. There's different versions of jQuery, and uh, I think jQuery, the latest version is 3 point something, but it's very new. I perhaps wouldn't use the newest, most cutting-edge versions of some of these libraries sometimes. Because it's still, you know, nowadays with like everything in beta all the time, do I want to run my app on beta software? So here it's recommending if you're going to use this jQuery mode, you then want to use jQuery 1.8 to 1.11 or 2.1. We'll see why there's a 1 and a 2 there in a moment. Click on latest stable. It'll simply start to download a zip file, 7.5 megs or so. It should not take very long at all to download, but it looks like our internet connection has been kind of slow recently. As that downloads, we also then need the jQuery library. We'll deal with that zip file in a moment. 
we also need jQuery in order for this to work. jQuery Mobile is part of the whole family of jQuery. So the first icon up here is the jQuery project. It's all part of the same family. Other things that you can explore are jQuery UI for more inter user interface elements. Sizzle, I'm not sure what that is, and QUnit. <coughs> QUnit. Let's go to the jQuery <coughs> portion of the site. This is download jQuery 3.1. We had just seen a moment ago, we don't want that version. We want either version 1.11 or 2.1. So what we can do is instead click on download. Uh, on jQuery Mobile it just downloads right away, but on jQuery right here you can see other versions to download. So I'm in the download jQuery. Scrolling down, we need an older version. Somewhere it'll say older version or different version. Here we go, past releases all the way at the bottom. Let's go all the way to the bottom, past releases. Go to the jQuery CDN, the content <coughs> Content Delivery Network. So we have what we have 3x, 2x, 1x. The reason for this is at a certain point, jQuery was branched off into the one branch and the two branch. The 1x branch had a lot of backwards compatibility to work with many kinds of web browsers. The 2x branch was branched off to abandon some of the oldest web browsers. It caused jQuery 2 to run faster, more efficiently, at the detriment of some web browsers. And then 3, I'm pretty sure from what I've read of 3, it's basically a continuation of 2, which also abandons some of the older code of one. It's the newer, mo most efficient version, it's the newest one, but we want to use, according to jQuery Mobile, either 1.11 or 2.1. And we, we know the reason for the 1x branch is to target older web browsers. But wait a minute, we're not quite going to target web browsers eventually, are we? We're going to target mobile devices. So we would be safe on either a 2x or a 1x branch. Uh, 3x is too new for us at the moment. Yes? Yes. 2.24, 1.12. We saw in jQuery mobile site it said 1.2, I mean 1.11 or 2.1. Okay, so none of these either. Scrolling down. Somewhere else, we will see, oh, right here, see all versions of jQuery Core. All the 3x, all the 2x's, all the 1x's. So basically, 2.1, this is what we, this is what we need. There's the uncompressed version and the minified version. The uncompressed version is the one that has the spaces and the tabs and comments. It's uncompressed so that we can actually look at this JS file and read it ourselves if we wanted to. No one really ever does that. This is a black box. Here's the file, just use it. You don't need to go into it and change anything or really understand how the inner workings of jQuery work. But the whole purpose of jQuery, their motto, write less, do more. When we get to writing our JavaScript, I don't want to have to write document.getElementById.onClick over and over. I want to write dollar symbol click instead of the same thing over and over, shorter. So you don't have to ever really look in the jQuery file. The minified version then is better 
because this is the one that has been stripped of all of the empty spaces and the tabs and the alignment, and it's just the raw code minified, compressed, faster for your system to process, faster for your mobile device to process. It's unreadable by us. Even the uncompressed version, I would say, is unreadable by most of us. So we might as well also use the minified version, which is machine-readable, faster, more efficient. Do we want that one? You should right-click. If you, if you simply do a click, it might show you something else that we don't want. You want to do the right-click. Save link as. I'm in Chrome. Mine says save link as. In your browser, it may say save file as, save download as, whatever it says. You want to actually save this file. I'm going to save it in the project folder that we created on our flash drive. In the app WW folder, I'm saving jQuery 2.1.0.min.js. The .min part is minified. The non minified version is jQuery.js. It's the full human readable version of the code. We don't need that version, we want the minified version. So I'll save. I got downloaded. And next we'll deal with the zip file. Did everyone get the jQuery JS file? Yes. So as, as we have our main folder, wherever it is, our thumb drive, USB uh, stick, whatever, uh -huh. that will ultimately need to go up to the cloud in its entirety with all of the links and references within that project folder. What, what do you mean by in the cloud? Yes, when we publish it, when we do Cordova build, eventually, all of that will be compressed together into one file. And that's what we're going to publish to the app stores. So before then, we don't have to worry about... Structure, yeah, exactly, because in our flash drive, we're just going to com consolidate everything into this the app WW folder. Eventually, we're going to put everything from this folder into the WW folder of a Cordova project. And then when we do Cordova build, it all compresses. It all becomes one. Yes. All right. So after you download the jQuery JS file, I had been waiting for the jQuery mobile zip file to download. This one is a zip file. It has pieces. The jQuery is just one file. Make sure that one file ends up in your WW folder. And now I'm going to click to open the zip file. I want to look in the zip file of jQuery mobile. What's inside of the zip file is a lot of things, most of which we don't need. We have several different versions of jQuery mobile here. We have, for example, the basic mobile structure. We have one that will focus on themes, icons, ping versions, a lot of different things. The simple answer here is what we need are the three files at the bottom only. jQuery Mobile 145 min CSS, <coughs> jQuery Mobile 145 min JS, and jQuery Mobile.map. These three files. Not the one that says jQuery Mobile CSS or jQuery Mobile JS. You see the difference? Minified versions, unminified versions. We need these three files. From the zip file, I'm going to drag them into my app WW folder. We don't need to uncompress. You just click it. Double click it. So once you download it, just double click it. Can you download it?
So I downloaded the zip file. I don't need to extract it. I only need the items on the end here. I only need .min.css, and .map. It's the last three lines, nothing else. I dragged them from my zip drive into my app folder. So what that gave me, what that gave me is the supporting files. What I also, one more thing that I need are the images. All of those icons that make up my jQuery mobile interface. Remember when we played with the interface, data icon equals home, data icon equals email. Those images are in that folder. So drag that images folder into the app folder as well. So these are the supporting files for our project. Obviously, if you're having any trouble at any point, raise your hand and I'll help you out. And so we want to set up our project something like that. Anyone need any help with that? Did everyone get those supporting files? Yes. I just want to make sure I have a short. Because I have like an extra folder in there, but I don't know. Because I don't know. Because I have to
All right, so I think we've all got this set up. We definitely need this before we proceed because our project is going to be based on jQuery Mobile. And jQuery Mobile basically runs on top of jQuery. So if you don't have this set up like this, your project just won't work. So what we've got in our WW folder is the jQuery library. We've got the jQuery mobile libraries and the images. This now will allow us to start to create the index screen and the art screen and pop-ups and all of that. So we need this as the most basic thing before we do anything else. I'm going to close my web browser. You don't quite need it at the moment. I'm going to open Notepad++. Let's go into Notepad++. We're going to then start to do lots of coding. We'll do a Save As. I'm going to save this into that app WW folder, the one we created today, and I'll call it index.html. Since we're starting with a blank document, we'll have to do the quick basic HTML project. You may have saved it from a previous day, but if not, remember we have a quick 10, 10 lines or so that will have us create a project. Start off in Notepad, save index.html in that folder, and then we'll create that basic file there. And we'll start to build up from what we've seen before. It'll be a good quick refresher about how we used jQuery Mobile before. And then we'll start to use jQuery Mobile to create the, this interface. Screen uh, interface 1, interface 2, the different sections, the actual content pictures and text and such, we'll borrow them from the website, the, the existing college's website. We saw a while ago for all of this to work, we wanted um, the meta tag for the viewport. So I'll go ahead and add that one in. Meta name equals viewport. Content. Remember this, we had the user scalable no, comma initial scale 1. Scalable. Just so that it's visible to you as I've zoomed in, I'm going to break this to the next line. This is still one line. Meta name, attribute, viewport. You don't have to break it, but I will so you can see it. Content, user scale, will know, initial scale one, and then one more. With equals device with. Next line, we want that jQuery 
style sheet. We downloaded those supporting files from jQuery Mobile and jQuery. Well, jQuery Mobile gave us a zip file, and from the zip file we took three files. Uh, a CSS file, a JS file, and a map file, which I'll mention later. But from up here we want to also connect to the to the style sheet. That's a link. Link tag. Link rel equals style sheet. So none of this should be new. We've talked about these things before. And that's pointing over to our file, jQuery.mobile-1.4.5. Dot five dot min dot CSS. That's one of those supporting files that I have inside of the, the project folder. We then have a couple of JavaScript files, jQuery and jQuery mobile. Best practice is to add the links to the JS files as the last thing in the body. So uh, script So we have the script tag, it, it is a pair, remember that, and with script here we have a source attribute that points over to our supporting files. First we should mention the jQuery file, because this loads in order. So we're going to load everything that is the jQuery file, so that then we can use everything in the jQuery mobile file. So the file name of that is in the source jQuery dash two dot one dot zero dot min dot js. After the jQuery library loads, then we will load the jQuery mobile library. jQuery mobile 145.min.js. Of course, be very careful there. This first one is a CSS file, and this second one is a JavaScript file. So for the same, you can link to whatever for different that's called the or whatever thing there. Yes. Yes, we don't write any JavaScript in between those tags if we have a source of an external package or a library. <coughs> So make sure that it's an opening and a closing script for each of them. Okay, um, in the project folder, 
it's all so far like this. Here's our index file, and all of these supporting files are right there in the same folder. That's why we have these sources that are very direct. If it was in a different folder, we'd have to have a different path to those files. The big idea is that we are going to use jQuery Mobile because it has the ability for us to create an SPA. Do you remember what that stands for from a while ago? SPA? Single page app. Yes, we will be able to have different screens in the same file. In the body then we, we will have a section. A screen full of content. Data role of page, if you recall, then sets this up as a screen full of data. We will give this an ID of home. If you recall the IDs have a couple of purposes. One is for CSS and one is for JavaScript. And therefore, when we make a link from one screen, one section to another, we can navigate from a section to another section, from a screen to another screen within a unique ID. What's the big difference between ID and a class? ID can only be used once. Yes, an ID can only be used once per document. So we're going to have different screens sections, but they can all only have one same ID. We can't have different IDs. So we can't have the same ID multiple times in this index. ID home can only be used once. Or else, when there's a button that says click to go home, and we have ID set to seven things, how will it know which of those seven things to go to? So ID should only be used once per, per section, per element. We're going to have a header. This is all part of interface one. Remember my drawing. I want to have a screen full. I want to have a header. I want to have a footer, main content. I want to have a nav bar. This is all a reiteration of what we talked about when we first talked about jQuery mobile last month. So this should not be completely new. We are going to learn plenty more new things, of course. But hopefully we can dust off those cobwebs because we have looked at this before. This is a header data position. Remind me, what does data position fixed mean? Keep it at the top. Don't let that header scroll around when we have to scroll up or down. Article is the main content. This is the one that's very unique. Role is main, not data role, but role with a class, UI-content. So article is our main content. Article is where we will have pictures and columns and text and uh, <clears throat> date pickers and forms and all of that. Article. After header and article, what might come next, especially for interface one? Footer. And what's the data role for it? It's very complex. Data role equals footer. We should fix it. We should stick it to the bottom. How do we do that? data position fixed. So all of this uh, we've seen before. It's, um, it's jQuery Mobile. This is the most basic way to create a screen full for your project. We're going to create different screens eventually and with most hand coding like we do, we would have to hand code another, another whole section. Um, so to save ourselves some effort, 
all of this section that we created here, we can copy it and paste it after itself and call it something like ID equals template. We're never, the user is never going to go to that template screen. But I want this template, I want this structure. Section, header, article, footer. I don't want to retype it every time I need a new screen. So if I copy this one time and make it as a template which I can reuse, that'll save my effort in copying and pasting. Oops, closing footer. There you go, thank you. So now, section to section. I'm going to paste it down here. ID template. So if I typed everything right here, I'll then just need to copy this next time to create the about screen. I copy this to create the contact screen. I don't want to retype it every time. This is a good starting structure. Yes. Article is role. It's one of the weird, unique ones. Everything else is data role always, except for article. So I'm going to make a little comment here. Reuse for future screens. It's a note for myself. I have this section as a template that I'm going to reuse for future screens. Now, if we, if we re remember back to our interface design, header, content, footer, interface 1. Interface 1 also, however, has a nav bar. So this is just something in the planning phases for you to think about. Interface 2 has a header, a content, but not a footer. So there's no perfect way to do this. This is just an idea that we have a section with a header, an article, and a footer. We could add also the nav bar to this quote-unquote template, but we're not going to use it most of the time. We're going to have the nav bar for interface 1, which goes back basically to interface 1 is going to be the index file, the art file, or screen, the computer screen. Just those three, at the moment, perhaps, will have Interface 1. Maybe we'll do Interface 2 for the personal schedule and the About. And then we've got Interface 3 for the pop-ups for the map and the user and all of that. So what I'm saying is that there's a value to following along with what I'm doing mechanically, but there's also a value of you thinking about what you are doing for future for future things for your own project. Hopefully you're practicing this stuff on your own for it to stick. Section ID home up in the header I also want to display a um, some text h1 we'll have that say welcome I'm going to add an H1. Uh, it might be a good idea to, act, to add the H1 for, for the template text, header text. So my home screen will display a welcome message after we get past the splash screen, which that gets designed via Cordova. After we get past, this, past the splash screen, we have this home screen. At the top, it'll, it'll say, welcome. Actually, I wanted to say the name of the app, my SDC. Welcome will be elsewhere. Up on the header, I also want a nav bar. 
I want to be able to jump from screen to screen. From my wireframe, my schematic, I have an idea of what screens I may want to use, may want to create. And that'll be part of a nav bar, which needs a data role. Nav bar. And the way a nav bar is set up is basically bullet points. We'll start off with three bullet points, three links. So in the header, nav, data roll nav bar, an ordered list of bullet points, three bullet points, three links, which will be in the nav bar, which will be in the header of my home screen. We had set according to the wireframe. home screen, art screen, computer screen. All of this, this is not new at all. We've seen these things. We've done HTML coding before. We've done uh, J, uh, JK Mobile also. Create something like that. We'll take a break in just a moment. One more little thing. Uh, these navbar elements, for them to be actual links, they need the A tag. Don't forget that has a pair. Very easy to forget that. That's why when I teach this stuff, I always teach about creating the pair and then fill in the detail. Don't forget that closes there on home and a close on art and a close on computers. href pound home. Pound is the shortcut basically for ID. Click on the home button to go to the ID home section. We don't have these other sections created yet for art or computers, but we can set them up now so that we can do a little copying and pasting and save ourselves some effort. So the art button will go to the art section, which doesn't exist yet. And then computers, I'll just put PC less to type. And obviously PC stands for personal computers, which means Windows or Mac. PC doesn't really just mean Windows, because you mean Windows, not PC. Because a Mac, let me blow your mind, a Mac is a PC. But the marketing is, I'm a Windows, I'm a PC. But a PC is a personal computer. Mac, Windows, Linux, Cray, well, not a Cray, but any of those. If you're going to make a completely separate section for Mac classes, I would make pound Mac. But this the concept is here, we're going to show a bunch of computer classes. And last thing that we'll take break on the actual article, here's where we'll say welcome. Yeah, one more thing. In the footer, we'll do an H4 with a copyright. Copyright with whatever the name of your app company is. It, you don't have a, even have to quite make up a real one or whatever. Um, I'm going to make up uh, S. Uh, 
VMC apps dot biz whatever. Create something like that, save it, we'll take a break. Uh, to confirm this all works, let me check if mine works. Now you can actually, since we're not in Cordova, you can do a regular old run. We're not in Cordova yet, so I'm, I'm going to do a run and let's see what mine looks like. And we'll take a break. So it should look something like that. Uh, zero six. What is it now? It's copy. Yeah, there it is copyright. Uh, so something like that. I'll zoom in in a moment. But uh, this is not new. We've seen this before. But this is starting to create interface one. Header, footer, content, navbar. Maybe some icons might look nice there. See so if you can remember how to add an icon. But let's uh, take a break at this point, 7.37. We're back at 7.47. See if you can get your code working up to this point, and then we'll go on.